Does your handlebar height actually matter? And more importantly, could it be affecting your speed and efficiency? We're gonna find that out today, stick around. In an effort to find more comfort and control, many off-road riders install bar risers. In my experience, I have often observed that most riders don't fully understand both the positive and negative effects that can occur because of such a change. Today we will be discussing both the pros and the cons to different handlebar heights, and most importantly, actually going out and riding to test these different setups. The bike we'll be riding today is a 2022 Sherco 300SE with stock handlebars. We're gonna be comparing two different handlebar heights. Height number one is a more traditional stock height. Height number two is the same handlebars with one inch bar risers. To simplify this process, we won't be considering any other handlebar bends or positions. We will keep both of these factors neutral between comparisons so as to not affect any of the results and to keep our attention directed towards the handlebar height. Both the handlebar position and bend are equally as important. However, we'll save that conversation for a different video. To compare the handlebar height, we have come up with three different tests. Test number one will be a short sprint on a turn track. Test number two will be a sprint section on a common section of off-road trail, including sand whoops, rocks, and fast terrain a few miles in length. And test number three will be a comfort test riding smooth trails and roads for a little bit longer duration. Now that we're all ready, let's go out and ride. The first test we rode was a short sandy turn track. Just under a half mile in length, the track contained 10 corners and two or three short straights. Being composed of mainly turns, this was a great area to test the cornering ability of the stock handlebar height. We rode each of the three tests with the stock handlebar height first, then we switched over to the taller bars and rode each of the three tests a second time. This was a great section of terrain to compare the cornering ability of the two different setups as well as the accessibility to the rider controls when in both the standing and sitting positions. Corey and I both took turns riding the same bike on identical tracks. This allowed us to get multiple opinions and lap times for each of the three tests. The second test we rode was a short off-road loop, 1.1 miles in length, containing a variety of obstacles, including steep uphills and downhills, sand whoops, rocks, washes, and a short road section. This test was designed to simulate common off-road riding conditions. The third and final test was a variety of two-track roads and trails. We approached this test with the intent to simulate common dual sporting conditions or adventure riding. Many dual sport riders often consider bar risers for their setup. Because this test wasn't associated with speed, we didn't use the GPS tracker to record lap times and focused only on the rider feedback. So we're out here testing the stock handlebar setup first. We're kind of doing our first round of tests. We're gonna measure the performance of the handlebars by both the rider feedback, because we all know riding is uh, really based on what we feel as riders. And we're also gonna pair that with the data that we collect using this uh, high precision GPS. We can track our lap times, we can break it into different segments. So we're also gonna compare the data. And we're gonna look for things like rider comfort, rider control, the ability to properly uh, maintain the attack position. And then we're also gonna look at speed and consistency using this data. So those are some of the things that we're gonna use to measure the performance of both the stock handlebar height and the raised, the higher handlebar height. Once we had completed all three of the tests, it was now time to compare the results and see what we learned. Let's first take a look at the results from test number one, the turn track. 
So up here on this screen, you can see some of the data about test number one, the turn track. We can see the length, we can see the terrain profile. And then down here at the bottom, we have a graph showing and representing some of our fastest lap times. So each time Corey and I went out to do a session, we did at least two laps. Sometimes we did a handful of laps. However, the data that you see down there at the bottom is reflecting the fastest lap from each session. So on test number one, I was actually 1.3 seconds faster with the lower handlebar height. Corey, on the other hand, was 1.1 seconds faster with the taller handlebars. So really interesting that we have split data here, um, but it's also important to keep in mind that we're gonna be comparing both the numbers and the rider feedback. And so it's real interesting sometimes that you may feel faster on a setup um, and you're actually slower. And so that's why it's really fun to do these different tests. However, let's jump into the Lit Pro MX app. We're gonna have a couple other features that are gonna allow us to dig a little bit deeper into the data. So now we're able to view the same track layout here inside the app. We have the ability to scrub through and see our speed and our time at different points throughout the track. If we let this play, you'll be able to see live how long it takes you to do one lap around the track. However, what's really cool about this app is we have the ability right here to drag over a second layer and compare lap times. So this first lap time that we were watching was my lap time with the stock handlebar height. However, this lap over here on the left that's represented by version lap or versus lap two, it's highlighted in yellow. That is my lap time with the handlebar risers, the one inch bar risers. So let's let this play from the beginning and kind of compare these laps back to back. You'll notice that they're pretty much neck and neck going through these first couple of turns. However, we're gonna observe where the time is made and where the gap occurs on this lap time. You'll notice right there in that turn, the pretty significant gap occurs and we start pulling ahead a little bit with the stock or the lower handlebar height. So it's really interesting to observe where this gap occurs and it actually happens right here in this pretty long left 180 turn right there. So um, I wanted to check this out to see if it was gonna be occurring here in the straightaways or if it happens here in the turn. Going into this test, I wanted to keep an open mind and see what the results and let the results speak for themselves. However, I did have the assumption that the lower handlebars were gonna perform better in the corners. However, as you guys are gonna see in the next test, um, things and the results were shaken up a little bit with the taller handlebars. Now let's turn our attention over to test number two, the off-road loop. This test was significantly longer, being over twice the length of test number one. It also contained much more elevation and variety. The track began with a steep uphill and downhill section, sand whoops, washes with turns and rocks, and a fast road section. Looking at this graph, we can see the lap times for test number two. Surprisingly, the taller handlebars were actually faster for both Corey and I. Personally, I did not expect this. However, after digging into the data, there are some things that stand out. I also think it's important to mention that we did complete the stock handlebar height test first and then switched over to the taller handlebars for the second round of testing. During our second attempt at the off-road loop, we were more familiar with the course. Corey also was riding my bike for the first time this day and was becoming more comfortable and familiar with the bike later in the day. These factors could contribute to some of the time differences. Either way, let's dive into the Lit Pro data to see what we can find. Again, comparing my fastest lap with stock height bars to my fastest lap with the tall bars, we can notice a few differences. In total, I was 1.4 seconds faster with the taller bars. However, as we play back the lap times, you'll notice that just a few moments into the lap, I already have a one second lead with the taller bars. For a lap that is over a mile long, it's pretty significant to have a one second gap only 500 feet into this test. Some of this could be due to the terrain at the beginning of the test, and I actually think that the culprit 
is this side hill right at the beginning of the test that had a lot of ditches and rain ruts. Maybe the taller handlebars made it a little bit easier to wheelie through these bumps and ditches. Now, before you make any conclusions just based off of the numbers, stick around to the end when we share our personal feedback and recommendations for all riders. The third test was really simple and we mostly just spent some time riding different mild trails, attempting to simulate what it would be like for a long dual sport ride. Now, before you go out and buy bar risers for your bike, thinking that you're gonna get faster, let's talk about some of the most important factors that play a role in your speed and give you some direction for how you should set up your bike. Just because the lap times may reflect a couple seconds faster on a short track doesn't necessarily mean you'll actually be faster in the long run. There are a lot of different things to consider. First off, let's discuss some of the major pros and cons that both Corey and I discovered as we were doing this test. Then we'll share our recommendations as to how you should set up your bike based on your stature and type of riding or racing that you do. Here are some of the pros and cons for stock height handlebars. Pros, the attack position. We often noticed that it was much easier to achieve the proper attack position with lower handlebars. Feedback, both Corey and I recognized that it was a little bit easier to quickly sense the front end feedback and what type of traction you were getting from the front tire with lower handlebars. Weight, it was a little bit easier to weight the front end of the motorcycle through corners with the lower handlebars. Some of the cons of lower handlebars are the accessibility. It is more difficult to reach the control components and the handlebars in general and standing. It can be a little bit more difficult to stand up for long durations with lower handlebars. Now, for tall handlebars, here are some of the pros that we noticed. The accessibility. Having taller handlebars does allow a little bit easier control and comfort when you're reaching for the control features and the handlebars. Standing comfort. It is more comfortable to just overall be in the standing position when you have tall handlebars. Some of the cons are trying to achieve the attack position. Because the handlebars are a little bit taller, it does tip you a little bit farther back and it's more difficult to achieve the attack position. The feedback also was delayed a little bit with taller handlebars and it's a little bit more difficult to sense what the front tire is doing and what kind of traction you're getting. It also was more difficult to weight the front end of the motorcycle when cornering. Most riders don't actually purchase bar risers because they think they'll be faster. Most riders actually raise their handlebars in an attempt to make it more comfortable to access the control features and to provide some comfort for long rides. The most important takeaway and lesson we should all learn from this video is that neither tall bars or low bars are better than the other. They simply have pros and cons and each setup can be more conducive for different types of riding or racing. The real answer lies not in what your setup consists of, but whether your setup actually complements the type of riding you're doing or not. If you are a racer competing in a variety of off-road events, typically riding at intense speeds and attempting to properly achieve the attack position with improved corner speed, then a lower setup will likely benefit you. If you are a trail rider who enjoys covering ground and exploring new trails, you may not be as concerned about performance, corner speed, and properly achieving the attack position. You'll likely benefit from a taller bar setup as it will improve your comfort on the trail. Where a lot of riders make mistakes is when they are trying to achieve an aggressive body position on the motorcycle. However, their handlebar position is actually working against them. Ultimately, this is one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to make this video. I often see riders who are working really hard to improve their body positioning on the bike, improve their corner speed, and practice the attack position. When competing or racing, you're often riding in a very aggressive body position referred to as the attack position. Unlocking your hips, pushing your butt back, riding on the balls of your feet, and leaning forward with your head and chest are all important components of the attack position. In my own riding, I have noticed it can be easier to achieve the proper attack position when you correctly set up your handlebars for your height. By running handlebars that are too tall, many riders struggle to lean far enough forward. This can often cause early fatigue due to the fact that you're hanging on more with your arms and are unable to grip firmly with your legs. By lowering your handlebars, you'll be able to achieve the proper balanced position, use your leg muscles, <laughs> 
and maintain the proper attack position for longer. If you are a rider looking to improve your speed and practice the attack position, then use this guide to help you with your handlebar setup. Riders under five foot eight inches in height may want to consider running a relatively low handlebar setup. Riders between five foot eight inches and six foot three inches can probably get away with running a setup somewhere near stock height. Riders taller than six feet three inches can consider installing some form of bar risers and still have the ability to properly maintain the attack position. Ultimately, it really comes down to what type of riding you're doing. Supercross racers, motocross racers, trail riders, desert racers, hard enduro guys, and everybody else will set their bike up differently. Go out and do your own testing to see what works for you. Although your equipment is important, it is not going to make or break your riding performance. At the end of the day, your bike really doesn't matter. What matters is your ability to maintain proper riding technique, balance, and control of your motorcycle. If you liked this video and you're interested in learning more tips and techniques just like this, check out our free one hour training. This value packed off-road masterclass shares our 10 off-road riding secrets that we have learned through years of experience out on the battlegrounds of racing. Learn about the attack position, proper braking zones, and how to carry more speed through corners as well as much more. The best part is it's completely free. Head over to ridewiththenights.com, enter your email, and start learning today. Be sure to subscribe to the Ride With The Knights YouTube channel and remember to keep on ripping.